Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to dual boot your Windows PC with Windows and Ubuntu Linux. Now, what is Ubuntu Linux? Well, Ubuntu is a distribution of Linux, and it's a operating system just like Windows is, just like OS X is. It's an operating system. The only difference is, is that Linux is freely distributed, and it's open source so anybody can work on it. So you just go down to the Ubuntu website, you download the operating system absolutely free, and you install it on your computer. And there are a lot of great programs that you can get for Linux, whether you pay for them or a lot of great free pieces of software on Linux. Whether they're media programs, be it audio programs or video programs, or even office programs. You can get OpenOffice on Ubuntu, which if you're not familiar, OpenOffice is the open source equivalent to Microsoft Office. So why would you want to try Ubuntu? Why would you want to use Ubuntu? Well, for me, I love to try new things. I love to try new operating systems. I love to try new user interfaces. And I really want to try Linux. So I'm going to be putting it on my laptop as my daily driver, as my basic, my main operating system. And I'm going to use it and see how I like it. Um, other people might want to try Linux because they're sick of Windows or they have an older PC that they want to run an operating system on and they don't want to have to run a, an antivirus software on. Uh, Linux is very flexible. You can use it on older machines. You can use it on the state-of-the-art machines and you'll get a lot of use out of it. Now for mainstream users Ubuntu is the most popular distribution of Linux going right now. That's why I chose it for this video here. I'm going to be using Ubuntu 10.10, .10, Maverick Meerkat, 64-bit. Currently, that is the latest distribution of Ubuntu going. In April of this year, they're going to be releasing a newer version of Ubuntu, which is going to be called 11.4. Now, one thing to note. You can actually run Ubuntu without installing it on your computer with what they call a live CD. So you burn the operating system to a CD, you put it in your CD drive, and you can actually run the operating system right from there. You're going to get slower performance that way, but at least you'll be able to try it out. If you want to get a little more serious about it, you can actually install it on your computer. Now you can install it right alongside of Windows, where it resides on the same partition, and you can boot into either or. That's not really recommended because when Windows updates, it can mess with your Linux files. So you want to keep them separate. What you want to do is you want to partition your hard drive so that Windows lives on one partition and Ubuntu lives on another. So there's not going to be any cross-pollination there. So for those of you who are not very familiar with Ubuntu, that's what Ubuntu is. For those of you who do know what Ubuntu is, thanks for bearing with me. I just wanted to get everybody on the same page and get everybody up to speed. So let's get started. I'm going to install Ubuntu alongside Windows in a dual boot situation on my laptop computer. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go down to the start menu down here. And what you want to do is you want to look up in the search box down here, you want to look up computer management. I just type in computer, computer management is the second selection here. I'm going to click on that and it'll bring up the computer management window. Now what you want to do is you want to go down to disk management over here. It's right under storage. So you click on disk management and it's going to bring up what hard disks you have attached to the computer. Now this is my laptop computer and I have two partitions on this computer. I have one 15 gigabyte partition. Actually it's 14.65 gigabytes and that's my restore partition. Then I have my other partition over here, which is my 451.11 gigabyte partition. And that contains all of my files and, and windows and whatnot on the computer. Now what you want to do is you want to create two new partitions for Ubuntu. Okay, So what you need to do is you need to click on... I'm going to leave the restore partition alone. You don't touch that, I'm leaving that alone. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this larger partition and click on it with a left click so that it's selected. And then I'm going to right click it. Now I want to shrink the volume. Okay, There's a lot of selections here. What you, what you want to do is go down to shrink volume. Okay, 
that's going to free up some space for Ubuntu. Now, I really want to try out Ubuntu. I really want to try it as my main operating system on my laptop here. So, what I want to do is I want to give it a good amount of space. If you're just going to be putting it on your computer just to try it out, just to mess around with it, I wouldn't suggest allocating a lot of your drive space to it. I would suggest using maybe about 10 gigs so you can use it. But in my case here, I'm going to give it approximately 220 gigs. Now, a rule of thumb on here is 1,000 megabytes equals 1 gigabyte. It's not mathematically true, but I don't need exact amounts here. So the reason I tell you this is because all your values here are in megabytes. So the first selection here says total size before shrink in megabytes, 461,940 megabytes that I have on that partition. The size of available shrink space in megabytes is 439,438 megabytes. So I have about 30 gigs of information on there currently. Uh, it says enter the amount of space to shrink in megabytes. Now remember, I'm going to be shrinking this partition, so whatever amount I want to use for Ubuntu, I'm going to put in, in here. So you're going to need two partitions for Ubuntu. You're going to need your main partition, and you're going to need a swap partition. Now, the swap space should be roughly equivalent to the amount of RAM you have installed on your computer. In this laptop, I have 4 gigabytes of RAM, so I want to donate or allocate 4 gigabytes for swap space on this drive. The other part is going to be 220 gigs for Ubuntu, roughly. Now, like I said, 1,000 megabytes is roughly 1 gigabyte but the actual amount is 1024 megabytes is one gigabyte but like I said I don't have to have this exact so we're just gonna use the thousand per gigabyte on this so like I said before I want 220 gigabytes for my Ubuntu installation and four gigabytes for my swap space so that means I need 224 gigabytes allotted here, so that would be 224,000. So I'm going to put that in here, 224,000, and that is the amount I'm going to shrink my Windows partition. So I'm going to click shrink here. Okay, it took a few seconds, and here I have 218.75 gigabytes of unallocated space here. Like I said, I wanted 224, but because the actual conversion isn't 1,000, that's why it's not 224, it's, that's why it's 218. But like I said, I don't need it exact. So this unallocated space, what I want to do is partition that one more time. So you basically do the same thing. You click on it, and you left click on it, and that's to select it, and then you right click on it. Now, in this case, it's an unformatted partition. So what you want to do is create a new simple volume. So click on that, and then just go through the new simple volume wizard over here. It says this wizard helps you create a simple volume on a disk. So just hit next, and then it gives you the maximum amount of space. I'm going to do that, hit next. It's going to assign a drive letter, which is D, which is fine because that's going to change when I actually reformat it in a Linux Ubuntu format. So a drive, assign the drive letter, we're going to leave that, and then we're going to hit next on this. And then it gives you a couple of options. Choose whether you want to format this volume, and if so, what settings do you want to use? The first one is do not format this volume. The second one is format this volume with the following settings. We are actually going to format it in the NTFS format, which is the default here. So we're just going to keep it the way it was default, where it says format this volume with the following settings. And do perform a quick format here. And we're going to hit next. And then we're going to hit finish. Okay. Now it's formatting right now. When it's done, I'll come back. Actually, it's formatted already. So the next thing you want to do 
is click on that, which in my case is drive D. Click on it with a left click and then right click it. And then you want to shrink this volume one more time. Okay. Now we're going to shrink it by the amount we want for the swap space. Now the swap space again should mirror your RAM in the computer. Like I said before, this computer has four gigabytes, so you really want about four gigabytes of swap space. So I'm going to put in 4,000 megabytes here. So 4,000, same as we did before, and click on shrink. Okay. It shrunk the Linux partition, or what will be the Linux partition, by roughly 4 gigabytes. It's actually 3.91 gigabytes. That's going to be the swap space. I'll quickly format that the same way I did before, by clicking it, left-clicking it, then right-clicking it, and hitting New Simple Volume, hitting Next, going through the wizard, hitting Next. It's going to assign the drive letter F. That's fine. And then just go with the default on this, hit Next, and Finish. Okay, it formatted it. Now I have four partitions. My first partition is my restore partition, which I will not touch. That's in case something goes wrong with Windows. The second partition, the C drive, is my Windows, drive, my Windows partition. The third partition is my D drive, which will house the main installation of Ubuntu Linux. And then the fourth partition is the F drive, which will be used for my swap space. So that pretty much does it for this part. What we want to do is X out of this. Okay, now I'm actually going to show you how to burn an Ubuntu ISO to a CD. Now you can actually put Ubuntu, the operating system, on a flash drive and then load it up on your computer that way. I personally prefer to put it on CD because that way I can archive it because I only have one flash drive and I use it for, for different things. So I'm going to show you how to put Ubuntu on a CD. Now if you recall in one of my previous videos, in the LightScribe video, I made the Ubuntu label here. Ubuntu 10.10 .10 Maverick Meerkat 64-bit. Right now we're going to take this disk and actually put Ubuntu on it. So what you need to do to do this is go to your favorite browser. In my case I use Chrome and I'm going to make this full screen here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up Ubuntu. The first entry up here is Ubuntu.com, and that's where I want to go. And what I want to do is download Ubuntu over here. Now there's two versions of Ubuntu. There's a 32-bit version, and there's a 64-bit version. My computer, this laptop right here, currently is a 64-bit laptop. It runs Windows 7 64-bit. So I'm going to use 64-bit Ubuntu. If your computer runs a 32-bit Windows, then you want to use 32-bit Ubuntu. If you're not sure, your best bet is just to go with the 32-bit. That way you're safe either way. Now I'm going to click on this where it says Download Ubuntu. And you have a couple of drop-down menus here. It says Get Ubuntu Desktop Edition Download. Now, it defaults to the 32-bit version. And this drop-down menu here, it says Ubuntu 10.10, .10, which is the latest version, which is Maverick Meerkat. That's what we want. But we're going to change the 32-bit version, which is, as it states there, recommended. We're going to go with the 64-bit version. So I'm going to select that. And then over here, there's a giant button here. It says Start Download, Ubuntu Desktop Edition 10.10 64-bit. So I'm going to click on that, and it's going to download over here in the lower left-hand corner. So it's 695 megabytes of information to download. I'm going to download that, and I will see you on the other side of that. Alright, the Ubuntu 10.10 64-bit ISO has been downloaded. I'm going to click on that. And it brings up the disk burning software that's on my computer. It's Cyberlink power to go You might have Nero or some other disk burning utility, but this is the one that's installed on my laptop. I'm going to start this up here. just want some personal information. I'm going to enter that in here because it's the first time I'm running this. Had I had already used this software, I wouldn't be prompted with this. 
Okay, I inserted my disk and I have this screen that popped up here. It shows the file where it's coming from, which is what I just downloaded, the Ubuntu 10.10 .10 desktop ISO. And it's going to write to my DVD drive here. Now, you can use a DVD or a CD, but there's really no use in using a DVD. It would be a waste of a DVD. Use a CD because Ubuntu is a large file, but it's not large enough that it needs something greater than a CD. Now, it gives you the option to change your write speed here. Now, 24 times is my maximum speed, but I really, to avoid errors, I prefer to actually put it at a lower speed. So I'm going to put it at the slowest speed, which is eight times. Now, it's going to be slower, obviously. It's going to be three times slower than the, the maximum speed on my drive here, but it'll avoid errors on the disk as much as possible. Now the number of copies is just one and perform write simulation is checked and verify recorded data is checked. The enable defect management is grayed out. So the disk is in the drive all I need to do is hit the burn button. So I'm going to click burn here and it should take a little bit of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this do its thing and I will see you on the other side of that. All right, the disk image burned successfully, and I'll just click OK here, and it should eject it. And it's all burnt and ready to go. Okay, I inserted the disk. The next thing I want to do is restart the computer. So I'm going to go down here and click on Restart. So we're rebooting the computer here. So you have two selections here. The Try Ubuntu, which is the live CD version, or the Install Ubuntu, where you're actually going to put it on your computer, on your hard drive. We're going to install Ubuntu on here. Over here on the left-hand side, you can select your language. It defaults to English here. So we're just going to leave that there and click on Install Ubuntu. The next screen we have here is Preparing to Install Ubuntu. For best results, please ensure that this computer, number one, has at least 2.6 gigabytes of available disk space, which I have, is plugged into a power source, which it is, and is connected to the internet, which it is not at this time. So what I want to do is go up to the upper right-hand corner and click on the Wi-Fi graphic up there and choose my wireless network and enter in my wireless key. So I'm going to do that right now and I'll join you when I'm done with that. Okay, I entered in my wireless information so now I'm connected to my wireless network. So everything is squared, all the check marks over here, the three check marks are, are in the green. And what I want to do is select Download Updates While Installing. This will make sure that I get the latest version of Ubuntu when I install this. So I clicked on that, and then it says Ubuntu uses third-party software to display Flash, MP3, and other media. And to work with some wireless hardware. Some of this software is closed source. The software is subject to the license terms included with the software's documentation. So it asks me if I want to install this third-party software, which are the Fluendo MP3 plugin, includes MPEG Layer 3 audio decoding technology licensed from Fraunhofer, IIS, and Thompson. I definitely want to do that, and then we want to go and click the Forward button here. All right, the next window I'm greeted with here is install window, the install window. It says allocate drive space. Install alongside other operating systems, which I explained a little bit earlier, which is probably not the best idea if you have a modern day Windows installation because Windows can actually mess with your Linux installation. So you want to keep them on separate partitions. That's why we partition the drive. The second selection here is erase and use the entire disk. Now if you were going to just have Ubuntu on your computer and nothing else, this would be the selection that you use. But that's not the selection that we're going to use now because we do want a dual boot. So the third selection is specify partitions manually, which is the advanced option. So we're going to click on that and click on forward. All right. Now as you can see here, the next window is allocate drive space. Now we have four partitions here. 
They're all highlighted up top here. The first one, as it was when I showed you in the computer management on Windows, the first one is the restore partition, which is 15.7 gigabytes. The second partition is the Windows operating system partition, which is 249.5 gigabytes. Now, if you kind of notice here, Ubuntu is calculating the gigabytes a little bit differently than does Windows, so just keep that in mind. The Ubuntu partition here is 230.7 gigabytes, and then the swap drive partition is 4.2 gigabytes. Again, like I said, it's a little, it shows up as a little more than it did on the Windows installation. That's why I'm not so exact on this. It's not that important. I have enough drive space to go around. So, but I know which drives are which or which partitions are which on this drive. So the first partition, again, I don't want to touch. The second partition, I don't want to touch because that's the Windows installation. The third partition is going to be my Ubuntu installation. So what I want to do is, it is currently formatted in the NTFS format. What I want to do is I want to click on that, and I want to change it. Okay, now I'm going to keep the size of the partition on this. That's not what I want to alter. What I do want to change is the Use As up here. Okay, there's a drop-down menu. Actually, it turns out to be a drop-up menu. I want to use this as the ext4 journaling file system. Okay? And then I'm going to click on format partition here. And then the mount point is just going to be the slash, which is the first selection here. Okay? And then I'm going to hit OK. And that's going to reformat the NTFS partition that I did in Windows, which was for the main Linux installation and now it's ext4 partition. Now the last partition down here is the swap space partition which is the 4.2 gigabyte partition. We want to click on that and click change. Now again we're not going to change the size of the partition, we're going to leave that alone. And we're going to click here on the drop down menu, which is a drop up menu, and use it as swap area. Okay. Now the format partition and mount point are grayed out so you don't use it. It's just going to be used as swap space. And then we're going to click OK. And it is now my swap partition. So now what I want to do is I want to click on my ext4 partition, the one that I'm using for Ubuntu Linux. And I'm going to use that as my installation point. And I'm going to hit install now down here. So it's going to install to that partition now. Now it asks me where I'm at. Well, I am on the East Coast, so I'm going to click forward on that. It's asking for my keyboard layout. So I'm in the USA here, and I'm going to leave it as a default here. And go forward. Now it's going to ask personal information here. Who am I? What's the computer name? What's my username? Choose a password, all of that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to fill all that out, and I'll join you on the other side of that. All right, it gives me a welcome screen here. It says, Thank you for choosing Ubuntu 10.10. .10. This version brings some exciting changes, including a new sound menu, the Shotwell Photo Manager, and features that make it even easier to find and install new software. While Ubuntu is installed, this slideshow will show you around. Ubuntu Software Center gives you instant access to thousands of free open source applications. Browse categories including education, games, graphics, and science. Software is easy to find, easy to install, and easy to remove. Featured software is GIMP, Joe Kosher, Stellarium, View Store, and Edit Photos. Ubuntu is ready for all your gadgets. Just connect your phones or cameras to get started. Shotwell makes it easy to organize your digital photos and share them on Picasa, Facebook, or Flickr. For advanced photo editing, you can find more free applications in Ubuntu Software Center. Included software is Shotwell Photo Manager and PTV Video Editor. Mobilize your digital life. All Ubuntu users get a free Ubuntu One 
account. Ubuntu One allows you to sync all kinds of files online so you can access them anywhere. Sync bookmarks, contacts, music, and pictures across all your computers. Take everything everywhere with Ubuntu One. So that's basically storage in the cloud. Buy music while you listen. Ubuntu's music player includes a built-in store, so you can buy and download new tracks with a few clicks. Thanks to Ubuntu One's file syncing magic, you can store your music online and listen to it from other computers. You can add your music to a portable music player, too. Just plug it in and get started. Included software, Rhythmbox Music Player, Ubuntu One Music Store. Email and chat. Use empathy to get chatting with your accounts from Yahoo, Facebook, Gmail, MSN, Jabber, and many more. Set your status and reach all your instant message contacts from a single place. Included software, Empathy IM, Evolution Mail, Wibber micro, Microblogging, and supported software is Skype. Social from the start. With the Me menu, being sociable has never been so easy. Use it to instantly post updates on sites like Facebook, Twitter. New messages appear in the messaging menu, so you can respond when you want. Supported services, Twitter, Facebook, and Ident Identica. Browse the web. Ubuntu includes Mozilla Firefox for fast, safe web browsing. You can also choose alternative browsers from Ubuntu Software Center. Included software is Firefox Web Browser. Supported software is Flash and Google Chrome. Customize Ubuntu. At the heart of Ubuntu's philosophy is the belief that computing is for everyone. With advanced accessibility tools and hundreds of options like your preferred fonts, color schemes, and languages, Ubuntu provides the flexibility to fit real people, whoever they are. Customization options, appearance preferences, assistive technologies, language support. Create documents and presentations. OpenOffice.org is fully compatible with Microsoft Office and has everything you need to create professional documents, spreadsheets, and presentations. OpenOffice.org is easy to use, packed with features you need, and com completely free. Included software is OpenOffice.org and Tomboy Notes. Get help with Ubuntu. Ubuntu is designed to be easy and safe, so don't hesitate to explore. If you have any questions, try the help menu in most applications or ubuntu.com slash support to explore your other options. We hope you enjoy Ubuntu. And that's it. So I'm just going to wait for this to finish downloading packages off of the internet and installing, and I will meet you back when that's done. Okay, the installation is complete, and it wants me to restart the computer, so I'm going to do that right now. Okay, now when it restarts, this is what you're going to see. This is the Grub bootloader. You see two Ubuntu Linux selections up top, then you have a memory test, then you have Windows 7 down here that also says Windows, 7, Windows Vista Loader but there's Windows 7 on the machine. So if you want to load Ubuntu, you go with the first selection. If you want to load Windows 7, you go with the last selection. As it's set up right now, the machine will boot directly into Ubuntu if you don't do anything. So if I didn't do anything after a couple seconds, it would have booted straight into Ubuntu. But since I moved the arrow key up and down, it actually gives me all the time I want to select which OS I want to go into. But for the sake of starting this up and showing you Ubuntu on this machine, I'm going to select Ubuntu, the top one, first. And here we go. The disk is no longer in the drive. I had to remove that and this is running straight off of the hard drive on the computer. That's the opening Ubuntu sound sequence. And this is the Ubuntu desktop. 